Hi, my name is Laura Stapien, and this is a brief video lecture about taking a patient history. So um, let's start talking by talking about, well, like, what is the purpose of a patient history? What even is a patient history? So the purpose of a patient history is basically we want to gather information about the patient. So we can, we want to know about their past. So where they came from, um, if they've had any medical conditions in the past, et cetera. And we want to know about what's going on currently that brought the patient into the hospital. So um, we want to do this so that the doctor is able to make a diagnosis uh, and create a treatment plan for the patient. <clears throat> Oops, sorry, skipping through here. All right, so uh, the first thing that we need to gather for information, um, there's a few, well, there's a few different things actually that we wanna gather for a patient history. And one of the first things is the signalment. So you might hear reference to the signalment um, when we're talking about completing files or setting up new clients. Um, it's all the information about the animal that's, um, you know, like their stats. So their species, are they feline, canine, uh, guinea pig, whatever, uh, their breed. Um, so, you know, lots of people know their dog breed. Lots of people don't know their cat breed. Uh, cat breeds, if they don't know their breed, tend to be either domestic short hair or domestic long hair. Uh, we also need to know the pet's age. It might not be possible for us to know the, the pet's age for sure. Some people know the pet's birthday if they bought the pet from a breeder. Lots of pets are adopted though through shelters and we don't, we might not have a lot of information about when that pet was born. So there might just be an estimate of the age. Uh, if you do know the actual birthday, um, put the actual birthday in there as well because that's good information to have. But if we don't know, then we'll just estimate the age. We also want to know the patient's sex. Are they male? Are they female? And we want to know their reproductive status. So are they spayed or neutered or are they an intact animal? Uh, so the next thing we need to know about is the environment of our patient. So uh, there's three aspects to that. So the, the origins of the pet, where did they come from originally? Uh, so are they a shelter animal? In that case, they might've been exposed to more uh, infectious illnesses, et cetera. Uh, did they come from a breeder? Um, that can give us lots of information about genetic diseases, if there's a possible genetic concern. Uh, did the animal come from a puppy mill? That can definitely give us a lot of information too about maybe uh, like the quality of breeding that was going into the uh, creating those animals. Uh, so where the animal came from is one of our first questions about environment. We also want to know about the current environment the patient is in. So are they an indoor and outdoor pet? Uh, cats specifically, that's really good information to have. Are they allowed to roam free or are they strictly indoors? Um, are they a farm dog or a city dog? Um, it, well, any kind of information like that uh, about where they're living and how they live. Uh, another question to ask about the current environment is are there other animals in the environment? Um, so if they come from a multi-cat household, it's much more likely that they've maybe contracted an infectious illness uh, than um, a single cat household. And then we also would like to know about the animal's travel history. Uh, so that can be really important because there's certain parasites or infectious illnesses that are endemic within a certain area. So if the animal has traveled to that area and are now so showing signs of that condition, uh, that kind of gives us a hint that it might be that condition. <laughs> if they haven't traveled to that area, then uh, maybe we can remove that from our list of possible um, diagnoses. We'd also like to know about the diet of the pet when we're taking a history. So we'd like to know what type of food are they eating? So canned food, dry food, uh, homemade food, raw food. Uh, and if they are feeding a commercial diet, what the brand of food is. I also like to know about the feeding method. So are they just leaving food out all the time and the pet free feeds or do they feed them meals and how much food are they getting per day? I also like to ask about treats and snacks. I like to ask about that in a very non-judgmental way. Lots of people um, have an impression that we might be mad at them if they feed the pet table scraps or something. Uh, so I like to ask it in a very non-judgmental way so that people aren't feeling shamed and then maybe want to tell a lie. So um, it's, it's okay to give your pet table scraps, just tell me about it if you are, right? 
Uh, I also want to know if there's been any recent changes to the diet, especially if it's a GI upset issue, changing in the food rapidly can sometimes cause diarrhea or vomiting. So th that's information that I definitely like to know. And then changes to appetite or the weight. So if a pet's usually eating really good and all of a sudden has stopped eating or usually is, uh, you know, a very slow grazer and all of a sudden is eating everything in sight, that's information that's going to be good for the doctor to know. Uh, or if there's visible weight gain or weight loss, that's also um, suggestive of disease. So will be good information to share with the doctor. Medical history is uh, another part of the patient history we want to know. We want to know, have there been any previous illnesses and what treatments were uh, part of treating that illness? We want to know if there has been any previous surgeries for the patient. Uh, we'll ask about allergies. Um, so pets can be allergic to food. They can be allergic to medications. They can have vaccination reactions. They can have environmental allergies. So we want to gather that information. We want to know if they are on any current medications. Uh, that includes supplements as well. So if the client is giving like a, let's say glucosamine supplement that they're buying at Costco or something, uh, we want to know about that. And we want to know the patient's vaccination status. So are they up to date on vaccines or uh, maybe they got their puppy series and haven't been back since? We want to know that information about the pet. And then uh, obviously we wanna know about the presenting complaint. The presenting complaint is what has brought the patient into the vet clinic that day. Um, so there are questions we want to know about the presenting complaint. We want to know about the duration. So how long has this been going on for? We want to know the severity. So would you say it's mild or all the way up to severe? Uh, we'd like to know about the frequency. So if there's specific clinical signs, how often is it happening? Let's say they're vomiting. Are they vomiting once per day, once per week? Those are very big difference in, uh, in time. And also if there's a specific time of day that the symptoms are happening. Um, we want to know about if there's triggers that trigger the, uh, the symptom we're discussing or if there's any situations it arises in. So for example, um, a trigger for, uh, so some dogs have a collapsing trachea and if they have a collar around their neck and then they're taking the animal out for a walk, that would be a situation, right? And then if they start pulling on it and it starts choking them, that would be a trigger, right? So then that trachea collapses and they start having a really hard time breathing and it kind of sounds like they're coughing. That's gonna be a trigger or a situational symptom. Uh, we also want to know about the progression. So did it start mild and it's getting progressively worse? Um, we want to know that information as well. And then any other characteristics that the client wants to share, uh, we would like to know more about. Uh, whoops. Um, Sorry, uh, so presenting complaint, some of the signs and symptoms that we can explore. So uh, I usually like to ask the client about what's going on and let them fill in the story. And then I like to just check in on some of these questions. You might not ask all of these questions every single time. Uh, it's going to depend. If you have an animal coming in with a GI issue, um, we, we're certainly gonna wanna ask about eating and drinking and their bowel movements and et cetera. Uh, do we need to ask about lumps and bumps? Probably not. Uh, but these are, these are definitely questions that we will uh, ask about and explore in the, in the patient history. So we want to know about the patient's eating and drinking. Is it normal? What does normal look like for the pet? Uh, if it's abnormal, what's changed? Uh, we want to talk about the diet, like those questions that we had asked before. Uh, what are you feeding? How often? Um, has there been any changes? Uh, we want to know if there's been changes to their appetite, um, if they're eating or not eating. Uh, we want to inquire about urine and feces. So are they passing urine? How frequently? Um, same thing with feces. Uh, is there vomiting or diarrhea present? Um, any lumps and bumps. So if we're talking about, uh, you know, if an animal's got a bunch of little warts everywhere or something, we're definitely going to explore those lumps and bumps more. Uh, if it's a respiratory issue, we'll be asking about the presence of coughing and sneezing. And we want to know about the patient's actions and attitude. So if usually they're a very energetic pup and now they're just laying there and they have no energy, that's a big difference for that animal. So actions and attitude can give us a lot of hints about how the animal might be feeling. Now, the thing with taking uh, a patient history is that we can't ask the patient about any of these symptoms. 
we're getting all the information from a patient history from the client. So it is fairly subjective. Sometimes clients like to make um, conclusions, like they draw conclusions about what they're seeing, and those conclusions might not necessarily be right. Uh, for instance, um, animals often have anal gland issues, and I've had so many clients say something along the lines of like, oh, I know my dog has a hemorrhoid, I can see a lump by its bum, and I know all about that because I've had hemorrhoids, and uh, <laughs> you kind of, you oh, okay, um, and then maybe explore a little bit further what kind of other information they might have about that. So sometimes uh, a client might have reached a conclusion. Um, we want to still ask questions. We, we can document what the client suspects, but we still wanna ask questions to flesh out what those sim symptoms might be that they're describing and seeing. Okay, so, um, so we've talked about the things that make up the patient history. So this is the information that we'd like to gather from the client. Uh, so how are we gonna go about doing that? That's the big question. And um, we talked about why we want to do it, right? So the doctor can have that information. Uh, so often the doctor does take the client history or the patient history, I mean, um, but oftentimes um, the, the veterinary assistant might be called upon to do that, especially when we're talking to clients over the phone and we're kind of gathering information to triage, being able to take a history is going to be very useful in that situation. Being able to take a thorough history uh, prior to the doctor coming in can be very useful. Lots of clinics will have a vet assistant or a vet tech go into the appointments to start the appointment. What we'll do is take a patient history, kind of take those vital signs, right? Listen to the heart, uh, take a heart rate, take the temperature, et cetera. That can kind of speed things along a little bit for the doctor, especially if they're running behind. And uh, what happens sometimes, I'm sure this has happened to, to you as well, it's definitely happened to me. Um, you go to a place, you tell them everything you thought you needed to tell them. They say, okay, great, I'm going to go and get the doctor now. While you're sitting there, you th keep going over your story and you're like, oh shoot, I missed something important. Great, the doctor's coming in and they can give that information to the doctor too. So being able to tell their story a couple times helps the client to remember everything it was that they wanted to share about the patient and gets us as most information as possible so that the doctor can make an accurate diagnosis. So now we're gonna ask the question, how do we do that? How do we get a patient history? So first of all, we wanna think about our body language. We wanna make sure we have open body language. We don't wanna walk in with our arms crossed, avoiding eye contact with a grumpy posi like facial position, right? We want to smile, we wanna be friendly, we wanna be professional for sure. Um, and we wanna have that open body language. So a relaxed body stance, no arms crossed, uh, we want to make eye contact with the client. We want to turn towards them. One thing I like doing, instead of being across the table, I kind of feel like sometimes that just feels like an awkward interview. Sometimes I'll, I like to consider standing either on the same side of the table with the client if it's a big enough room, or at least on, um, like, so that we're, like, on, like, side by side sides of the table instead of being across from each other, being side by side. So I do like to take that approach if it is possible. Obviously size of room, et cetera, like don't get in people's body bubbles, <laughs> give them space. Uh, but it is a lot more easier to have that conversation if the client doesn't feel like they're in uh, some kind of face-to-face -face interview. So you may wanna consider where you're standing in the room as well. And then when it comes to communication, we want to allow the client to lead the conversation. So this is not an interview where I am asking a question and the client answers it. And then I ask another question and then the client answers it. I want to invite the client to tell me the story of what's going on with their pet. If we approach taking a history, like having a conversation, we're going to get better information from the client. If we approach it as an interview, so I'm asking a question and they're answering it, the client isn't going to volunteer other information. They're just going to answer the questions that you've asked. So if you don't ask the right question, you're not gonna get the right information. So I like to just let the client talk. Just tell me everything you want me to know and then I'll make notes about it. So while they're talking, I wanna make sure that I am active listening. Active listening is a skill and it takes time to develop that skill. Shut your brain off for thinking of responses or thinking of, you know, what you want to say next. Um, sit and actually listen. Try to hear and understand what the client is saying. 
Another thing that we can do along with active listening is observing the client for nonverbal communication. Um, so sometimes you can pick up on clients, like maybe if you ask about the table scraps and they look really dodgy and they don't want to make eye contact with you and they're like, well, I mean, uh, I mean, just once or twice a week, maybe we're, maybe we can kind of read into that nonverbal communication. Like, oh, do you think maybe it might be a little bit more? Um, so we can tap into those things. If someone looks really uncomfortable around a question, um, we can observe that and, and maybe kind of lean into that more and see what might be causing that discomfort. Um, we can also model that we're using our active listening by repeating back uh, important information. So uh, paraphrasing what they're saying. Um, I like to just kind of summarize what they said. Okay, so it sounds like Fluffy's been having a hard time with diarrhea lately. It happened a couple days ago. I like to just summarize what they're saying and make sure that I'm getting that information correct. If they do talk about something that is uh, potentially important, but they haven't given us enough information about it, we can certainly ask follow-up questions to delve deeper into that area. So that's something else we can do. Uh, when we are asking questions, two tips for you. One, we want to ask easily introduce, easily understood questions, and we want to make sure those questions are open-ended. So an open-ended question doesn't have a yes or no answer. So I'm not going to say, do you feed your dog dry food? They'll say, yes, I'll write down dry food. I want to say, tell me about the things your pet eats. And they'll say, okay, well, I give them some dry food. Sometimes they get some cans from the store. I'll give them a little bit of turkey when we have turkey dinner. That's the better question. It's open-ended. Tell me about, what can you tell me about what your pet eats, right? So that's an open-ended question. I also want to avoid leading questions. So again, with the table scraps. Uh, so what do you, tell me about what you feed your pet. Well, we feed him, you know, iams and we feed him a cup a day of the dry food. Um, my next question isn't going to be, you don't feed him table scraps, do you? Because if they do feed him table scraps, I have suggested in my leading question what the answer is. The correct answer I want to hear with that question is, oh, of course not. If they do feed table scraps, they're probably still going to answer, oh, of course not, because they don't want to feel shame about what they do. So uh, clients will often um, try to give you the answer they think you want. So don't ask leading questions. Open-ended, non-leading questions is our goal when we do need to probe into an area for more question or for more information. Okay, so this is our method for taking a patient history. Our first step is we need to introduce ourselves. We're not just gonna walk into a room and start asking questions. We wanna tell the client who we are. So ideally check the file and the um, information to make sure that you know the pet's name and the pet's gender. Uh, page, or clients don't like it when you call a boy dog a girl. Uh, so, you know, check the, check the patient's sex before you walk in there uh, so that you are using the correct pronouns for the pet. Uh, or just use gender neutral pro pronouns as well. Like uh, they, they, oh, they're so cute is really easy to do if you aren't sure if it's a male or female dog. Um, so check those things and check the patient or the client's name as well. Um, some hospitals like you to greet the client by their name. So, you know, hello, Mrs. Jones. Um, you know, I'm here to do a patient history. Uh, it kind of depends. I usually leave the client's names out of it and I'll, I'll kind of walk in and confirm like, hi, you're Fluffy's owner. Okay, great. So my name's Laura Stapien. I'm one of the veterinary, uh, veterinary technologists here at the animal hospital. I'm here to take a patient history for Fluffy. Is it okay if I ask you some questions? So that's kind of how I'll start things off. Uh, and this is working on the assumption I've never met this client before. Uh, so I usually just like to confirm that they're the pet's owner. And I don't really usually go by their names, but it go with what your hospital prefers. If they want you greeting by last name, um, then go ahead and do that. Uh, so when we're introducing, like I said in my example, I want to identify my name. I want to identify who I am, why I'm here, because uh, it doesn't make sense to just um, walk in and just start talking about whatever. Are you the doctor? Uh, people have mistaken me for the doctor before, so I'm always sure to make sure I'm saying what my role is. I don't want to confuse anybody when I'm walking in that room. And then I always let them know what I'm going to do. So I'm here to take that patient history. 
And it's just good manners and, um, and polite to say, and is it okay if I ask you some questions? They might not be comfortable talking to a vet assistant or a vet tech and they only want to talk to the doctor. And if so, then we'll respect that, obviously. Uh, so, we, but we do want to ask. We don't want to just assume. That's just good manners. So our second step is to confirm the past history. So I'll review the file. I'll have a look at the signalment. So we'll confirm those items. I'll confirm the environment, the diet, the medical, pardon me, the medical history. So all those things we talked about at the beginning. Um, I can confirm all those things. If they are a new patient, I might need to gather that information. If they are an existing patient, I might already have all this information in the file and I might not really have to confirm that. It depends on the situation. Uh, it depends if it's a new or existing client. It is still a good idea to just double check on a lot of these things. Yeah, it's unlikely for the male dog to all of a sudden be female, uh, but it is possible like in environment, maybe they've done some traveling recently uh, for diet. Maybe they've changed the food for medical history. Maybe it had an emergency, went to the emergency hospital and we weren't notified. So it's a good idea to just double check on these items. Our third step is to uh, investigate the presenting complaint. So what's been going on with Fluffy? That is always my question. So tell me about what's been going on. What brings you in today? Then the client will unload their story. Sometimes it's very brief, depends on the client. Sometimes it's uh, long and drawn out with all kinds of details. Regardless, we wanna actively listen while that client is telling us the story. And we want to actively listen with empathy, right? Empathy is um, a very important task for anyone working in the veterinary hospital. So we want to empathize with them while they're describing their story. Um, Ooh, that sounds tough. Oh, no, oh, up all night. You didn't get any sleep. Oh, you poor girl, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and then if they do uh, identify something that you're interested in learning more about, we can ask those questions. So again, open-ended, non-leading questions to explore and gather more detail if needed. Uh, and then our fourth step is to record information in the medical file. So I am not taking notes while I listen to the client. Um, I like to just listen to the story and then recap the story, like kind of paraphrase it back. As I'm doing that, I can write that into the file to confirm I'm getting the correct information. Um, it, I mean, unless you have a really terrible memory, it shouldn't be hard for you to listen and then re go over the story back with them and put in the details in writing. Um, if it is really tricky for you to remember things, then yes, you can make some jot notes, but I just feel like when we're making notes, we're not listening as well. So I, it is better practice to listen to the story, paraphrase back the details, write it down after you paraphrase. So while I'm recording that information, like I said, I'm gonna read it out to the client when I'm rec recording, because I want to confirm that info. So you said Fluffy's been vomiting for four days. Okay, so four days of vomiting. Um, and I, you said that it started off, uh, you know, with food in it, and now it's just kind of foamy and bile, right? Okay, yeah, and I can write that down, right? Um, I really want to, while I'm doing this, encourage the client to correct anything or provide any additional information if they have. This is their opportunity to uh, really flesh out the story for the doctor. And then our last step in taking a patient history is to conclude the patient history. So we always wanna give the client the last word. So I'll say, okay, so I think I've got everything recorded here. Is there anything else you think you'd wanna add? Anything at all, you might think even, you might be minorly important. So I'm letting them know it's okay to share with me anything at this time that we think might be important to this situation. Even if you're not sure if it's important, please share it, right? And then I always wanna thank the client for the information. Well, thank you so much for telling me about Fluffy's situation. Uh, I'm gonna step out now and I'm gonna share what you've told me with Dr. Jones. I keep using Jones, sorry. Um, I'm gonna share what you've told me with Dr. Jones and, um, and they'll be in shortly and, uh, and, and go over everything with you. And then, um, and then at that point, I would probably exit the room. So uh, that's kind of just an overview of taking a history. So I wanna really stress here some of the uh, just important points. We wanna make sure we're actively listening. We wanna let the client lead that conversation. So just let them tell you the story and you just have to listen. And then when it comes time to record the information, 
um, that's when we're going to paraphrase back what they're saying and confirm the details and then write them into the file. Um, we always want to introduce ourselves first and we always want to let the client have the last word and then thank them at the end. So those are kind of the steps. Those are the important things to make sure that we cover in doing a patient history. One thing that I will say in my, when I personally take a patient history, I always start with an introduction. I never walk into a room without saying my name. I don't care if I know this patient personally. Um, like if they're like a personal friend, I'll probably still walk in and I'm still going to identify myself. Hi, I'm Laura. I'm one of the vet techs at this hospital. I'm here to take a patient history for Fluffy or I'm here to take Fluffy to the treatment area. I always identify myself when I walk into a room. Um, and then this confirmed past history, I do this last. I find clients are just itching to tell the story about why they're here. So after I've introduced myself, I just dive right into presenting complaint. Tell me what's been going on with Fluffy. They'll tell me the whole story. And then I can go back and kind of confirm some of that past history. Uh, so has Fluffy ever had problems like this before or any other illnesses? I can get that information that way. Is Fluffy up to date on vaccines? What have we been doing with diet? Where'd they come from? Uh, have you done any traveling? I like to confirm all that after because I find in my experience, clients just really want to tell why they're here now. So I leave all this stuff for the end because it's not important to the client in the moment. It's important information for the doctor to have, yes, but the client doesn't want to talk about whether or not they go camping with the dog right now. They want to talk about why their dog is sick and what's been going on. So I let them tell that story first, get it off their chest, and then we can confirm these items and, and talk about that past history. And then, of course, I always record that patient information in the file. So when we are asking questions of clients, we don't want to um, make it like an interview, okay? I find that's the worst way to try to get it, the information because the client assumes that you are really smart and that you know everything and that they're, they don't know. So they're going to defer to your questions and they might not, well, they didn't ask about that right? Oh, well, of course I didn't say that the animal has been having diarrhea. You didn't ask me about diarrhea. So those are things we want to avoid is having that just straight, like what's the pet's name, age, sex, have they been eating? Have they been pooping? You know, we want to, we want to let them tell their story first. If you approach it like a conversation, I find you will get so much more information from the client and it's the information that we need so that the doctor can make that diagnosis. All right, so if you do have any questions about taking a patient history, be sure to ask them. Um, your instructors are there to uh, help with any questions that you might have, so do please reach out. Uh, and then as always, thanks so much for listening. Take care.